struggles with addiction is something that many families have to deal with. Whether it's alcohol or drugs, food, sex, gambling, you name it. A recent report by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention showed that Americans are drinking themselves to death in record numbers. Deaths from alcohol are at a 30-year high. More than 30% of Americans have abused alcohol or suffered from alcoholism in their lifetime. So in today's Relationship Reboot, we're looking at the impact alcohol addiction can have on family relationships. And joining us now, we have our relationship guru, Kirsten Lynn Seal. And Kirsten, this is, I mean, we've, we mentioned a very heavy topic, but it also, it, it can affect someone if they're living alone, you know, they're you know, that alcoholic that you picture, you know, kind of mm -hmm. hold up in a bar by themselves. But mm -hmm. when it's a family, it's a very different impact. Yeah. Yeah, the thing about alcoholism and really any substance use disorder is that uh, it really does affect the family system. Mm -hmm. um, in large part, that's because whenever you're addicted to a substance, your main priority becomes getting that substance, using that substance. So whether it's alcohol, prescription pain medication, uh, you are just focused on that. And so a lot of other priorities tend to just fly out the window, and this is where the problems can really happen. We know in Minnesota and Wisconsin, Iowa, mm -hmm. the stats for this part of the country that alcoholism is a serious problem. We right. all probably have friends who grew up in that household where right. mom or dad or both right. had a drinking problem. Right, exactly. And that affects your whole life. It affects your whole life. So here's the thing, it does affect your whole life, but if you become aware of the fact that you are sort of reacting because of that influence, then there actually, there are a lot of things that you can do. Um, the way that it often affects children, like for example, there are roles that kids fall into. For mm -hmm. um, usually the oldest, not always, but usually the oldest will sort of become the hero, the uber mm -hmm. responsible one. And in mm -hmm. fact, the other thing, we call this parentification when a child becomes the parent because if a parent is really struggling with alcohol abuse then they're really not able to sort of fulfill a lot of the functions sure. that a parent should and yeah. then so the hero will step up the oldest mm -hmm. child often um, then you have the rebel so someone who's really rebellious who you know punches holes in walls and gets mm -hmm. into trouble in school and then often it's the youngest you have the mascot so kind of you know everything's fine and you know gonna mm -hmm. tell a lot of jokes and keep everything Everything's fine in our family. Drinking, I mean, it's pretty normal. People go out to bars, mm -hmm. they have wine with dinner. Mm -hmm. At what point do you realize that you have a drinking problem? Are there some signs that you right. can keep an eye out yeah, for? Yeah, yeah. So some of the questions, and you know, there's a real continuum of sort of what is sort of social drinking. You know, mm. it's legal, it's something that is all over our society. Um, so I would say, you know, if you're worried about your drinking or thinking about it, so ask yourself these questions. Um, does my drinking seem to impact my work or my relationships? Like, mm -hmm. am I missing work? Are friends or family saying things like, um, try not to drink so much, or can you just not have that one more? Mm -hmm. um, if you say to yourself multiple times, I'm just going to have a few, and then that's really hard to do, those are all signs that you might want to really look closely at your drinking. How about if you're a family member and right. you're worried about someone, what are those questions yeah, you should Yeah, so those ask? questions are, am I losing sleep because I'm worried about the problem drinker? Mm -hmm. um, you know, am I uh, walking on eggshells because I'm really uh, not sure what I'm going to, you know, when I come home, is my husband, say, going to be drunk? Is he going to mm -hmm. be passed out on the couch? Is he going to be, am I, are we going to get into a fight because he's really moody and grumpy? These sorts of questions. And it, when you do realize that, because... You may have mentioned all those things that we talked about, like have people asked you, right. um, maybe you don't have that one extra, what can you do at that point? Right. So, you know, so one of the things about being in the great state of Minnesota, of course, is that we have, we're sort of known as a center for recovery. We've got mm -hmm. Hazelden, we've got all sorts of different, very, very good treatment centers in all the major hospitals, and they're also 12-step groups. This, these work for, for many, many people. Um, and they're also 12-step groups for families, right? So sort mm -hmm. of family recovery around that. Of course, there's also counseling and therapy, um, and there's also uh, there's sort of psychoeducational groups where you go to sort of learn about this type of thing. And then if you have a friend or a family member who has struggled with this, you know, sort of, you know, letting them in on what's going on. Because, again, the biggest problem with this is that it often tends to turn into this sort of family secret. And the family mm -hmm. kind of bands together because nobody wants to say that something's going wrong in their family. And that's where a lot of the toxicity and the relationship problems happen. In your practice, mm -hmm. how many of the cases that you're dealing with involve substance yeah. abuse? In some way. Well, you know, so I work a lot with families and couples and also individuals, and I would say probably like 60% of the people that I see wow. have had the influence of yeah. alcohol either growing up or with a current partner mm -hmm. or, or that they struggle with themselves. Wow. So if that is happening within your family, you're by no means alone. No, no exactly. It's, and, it's, and there's hope. You and, find the help. You, yes. You can yes, turn it around. You really, really can. So that's, that's the biggest message is that there really is, there are things that you can do and you can have really good relationships going forward.
Kirsten, thanks so much. Yeah, you're welcome.